What's up guys, John here and welcome back to John Moon Studios. In this week's video, we're going to talk about the six things I wish I knew before I started using Cubase. So let's get right to it. So these six tips are not in order of preference, but these are six things I wish I knew coming over from Logic and Pro Tools that I wish I knew in Cubase before I got started and it would have made my life a lot easier. So the first thing we're going to talk about is click patterns. So click patterns is essentially your metronome, but you can accent different beats depending on how you're using the time signature that you're currently writing in. So for example, if let's say I want my click track to accent beat one and three, I can create that inside of Cubase going into the click patterns. So if we go ahead and turn on the metronome right now, you're going to hear the standard click pattern. So I muted all the tracks so we could just focus on the click pattern. So this is a basic 4-4. I'm sure if you're watching this, you know what a basic 4-4 sounds like. So now what if I want to change the click pattern within this time signature? Well, there are two ways to do it. You can go down here, you can open up the metronome settings and then go to where it says click patterns. Now when you open up click patterns, you're going to see that you can add a new time signature. There are custom time signatures that Cubase already has laid out for you. And you can scroll through this page. And then within each time signature, you can create some subdivisions as to how you want some of these time signatures to act. So now the second way to reach the click pattern is to highlight the signature track. If you don't have a signature track, you can just create it by right clicking on an empty space, finding the time signature track right here, or hitting this plus sign and this prompt will come up where you can hit more tracks and then there you have your signature track. Now, when you click on the time signature here, you're gonna see in this section, in the object info or object selection window, you're gonna see that it says click pattern. If you click on it, we can essentially do the same thing. So now I can completely remove the third beat or I can make it accented as well. So if we listen to the click now, And you can create different patterns depending on how you're treating these time signatures. You can use a user pattern or you could do one of these patterns that you have made as a preset in the menu that I showed you before, or you can save it just directly on this window as well. Moving on to the next thing is zooming options. So zooming options is very important because it allows you to either stretch or shrink a particular spot inside of a project. So the way we do that inside of Cubase is actually a couple different ways, but I'm gonna show you the shortcut way because with the shortcuts, you can do a little bit more than just moving these sliders. So you can move these sliders around left and right and it could zoom in and zoom out. The same thing with vertical zoom. So you could zoom in and you could zoom out. But in our keyboard, we can actually press G and H to do the same exact thing. So if I hit H, it's going to stretch horizontally. And if I hit G, it's going to condense horizontally. So if I hold shift and press G and H, it's going to do the same thing, but vertically. So now instead of using these sliders, we can now use shift G and H or just G and H to move it horizontally or vertically. Now let's say we have audio tracks. Now this is a big one because coming from Pro Tools and coming from Logic, there's a simple way to stretch or what we call blowing up the audio waveform. So that way we could see even waveforms that are quieter than others. So let me actually just render a track in place so that you can see it. So I'm gonna highlight a track, let's say this pad, I'm gonna unmute it and I'm gonna go to edit and I'm gonna to go to render in place and then just render with current settings. I'm just gonna do a quick render. We're not gonna really focus on any audio today, but we're gonna see how we make this audio waveform a lot bigger in case we need to see certain things. So notice how in the beginning part, we can't really see where the note enters or where the audio enters. So if I hold option on my keyboard and I press G and H, 
you're going to see that with H, it's going to blow up the audio waveform. And now we see exactly where the audio starts. And we could do the same thing. If it's too big, then we could press G while holding Option. And then it's going to shrink the audio waveform. So again, coming from Logic and Pro Tools, this is huge because when you're working with audio, you need to know where audio begins and ends. And you also need to know where are your peaks and where are the softer parts inside of the audio waveform. If you want to check out more zooming options, if you open up the key command window, which is in edit, and then go down to key commands, you can go to where it says zoom all the way at the bottom. So let's say all of these are collapsed. You're going to go all the way down to zoom, open this up, and then you're going to see all of the different zooming options that you have available and how they're mapped inside of Cubase by default. I have not touched any of these. So these are the default key commands. So the next thing we're going to talk about is how to make your cursor restart back to where you started playback. Now, what this means is by default, Cubase, when you press play, if it goes up to four and you stop it, it'll the cursor will stay at four. But with the setting that I'm going to show you now from the preference settings, you're going to press play on one. It's going to go to four, but then it's going to go right back to one. Let's see this. Right, so I stopped it at three and you saw that it jumped right back to one. Now, why is this important, at least for my workflow and something that I wish I knew how to do is because when I'm recording, I don't want to have to click back at one to re-record something. If I mess up somewhere, I could just hit Command Z and when I stop the playback, it's going to automatically go back to where I started recording from. So this helps me by cutting time of me having to go to my mouse finding where my position is and then clicking it again. So let me show you where to activate the setting. We're going to go into Cubase and we're going to go to the preference settings. The preference settings is going to open up here and we're going to go, if you're on any other tab, you're going to go down to the transport tab. Now in the transport tab, you're going to click one of these boxes and it's going to be the return to start position on stop. If this is not on, it will not return back to where you started from. So let me show you. If I take it off, for example, hit apply and then go OK. And I press the space bar to start. Stop at two. You're going to see that it automatically stops at two and it does not go back to where I had it. And that's why it's a problem for me because I want to go back to where I started from. So with that preference setting on, which is in transport, return to start position on stop. I'm going to apply it and then press OK. Now when I press play and then stop it, it's going to jump right back to one. So the fourth thing that we're going to talk about is color list view. So notice how when you go to your color palette, you're probably going to see a bunch of little squares and you're not going to see it in what is called list view. Now the list view is very helpful because I could see what color is attached to what instrument type that I'm using. And since I do film scoring, I have brass percussion, woodwind strings, and I don't want to be searching for all of these colors all of the time. So I have names attached to these colors. Now, how do we do that? We're going to go into project all the way down to project color setup. Here, you're going to see this window pop up. This is where you're going to name and choose your colors. So when you name and choose the colors, you could choose the color here. And then you could type in the name just by clicking on the name part. And then you can insert, duplicate, remove, or reset the colors there. And if you want to make sure that you see it in list view, you got to go to the options section and then do select color by name. If this is checked off, you're going to see it's going to go back into those squares. Even though the names are still attached to these colors, I don't want to have to hover my mouse to see it because I'm not going to remember exactly what shade of blue was my woodwinds, for example. So I'm going to go to project, then I'm going to go to options, select this box, apply, and then now you're going to see it pops up in list view. The fifth thing we're going to talk about is click rendering. So when you send projects to musicians to record over it, or what we call remote recording, we want to also send them a click file and not just say, hey, you know, this track is in 130 BPM. The reason for that is to make sure that there's consistency throughout all of your tracks and to know that all of your musicians that you hired or you're working with have the same exact click track. So the way we do it is we need to actually put cycle markers 
in whatever region you want to do. So in this case, you would probably put it for the entire track or just a small section you want someone to record a solo over or something like that. And then you need to make sure that you have a time signature track available. Once you have your time signature track available, you're gonna hit this little drop menu, and then you're gonna go to render audio click between locators. When you do this, it's going to render a click depending on your time signature and the tempo you have. It's going to render a click, which is right over here. So if we can look at the metronome on the bottom right here, it's off, but if I play this one, it has the same accent pattern that we worked on at the beginning of the video. And if I turn mute this and turn on the original click, now we can see that the musicians are hearing what we are hearing. So that's the importance of sending a click track whenever you're collaborating, just to make sure that there's consistency between file sharing. And the last thing, which is the sixth thing I wish I knew before I got into Cubase was how to create minus bars. So in Pro Tools, we know we can go and just kind of offset the numbers by going to, I believe, Setup and then Renumbering Bars. And in Logic, you can just simply grab the left part of this measure section and then you can drag it backwards and create minus measures. But in Cubase, you have to go into the project setting. So let's go into Project, all the way down to Project Setup. And then here in this window, you have to go to where it says Display Bar Offset. And now I know this is a weird name to put, but this is exactly what you need to have on so that you can see these minus bars. So if you go positive, then you're gonna create negative numbers. And if you go negative here, you're gonna create positive numbers. So obviously we want minus bars. So I put two bars of offset, meaning it's gonna give me the zero and the minus one. If I create more, then of course it's going to give me do we want to keep the yes? So let's just put yes. And then it's going to shift over and create two more negative bars for me. If I want to remove those negative bars and I want to leave it at the negative one, I'm going to drop it back down to two, hit OK, and then hit yes so that everything could stay in their relative bar position. This is really great because when you're working with film, you usually want the music to start right on bar number one. So these are the six tips I can give you, the six things I wish I knew before I started working inside of Cubase. It would have saved a ton of time in the beginning, but now I figured it out and I am passing the information on to you guys. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and drop your comments down below and I'll get to them as soon as possible. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up, subscribe. Don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my weekly videos. Also, don't forget to check out the John Moon Studios website. I have my Cubase tech course. So if you're brand new to Cubase and you want to learn how to use Cubase inside out using all of the features and getting used to all of the interfaces of Cubase and what they do, go ahead and check out the John Moon Studios website. I'm gonna link that down below in the description so you can go ahead and purchase your course today. As always, don't forget to share with your musician friends. I will see you guys soon.